और वेल पठान जैसे कि नहीं सर नो बेटा नॉट इन टू मूवीज एनी मोर अरे सर टू ओके सो हाउ हैज ग्रेट सर्कल बीन बेटा any doubts any queries you are having anywhere you are getting stuck sir what about the four things that you have solved uh those three highlighted ones so far as far as discussing are good great beta that's very good sir can you explain cosine formula with four parts okay you are talking of the four parts formula yes sir Uh, i would recommend leave that formula beta instead of using four parts we can use other methods we can use other methods do you have any question where you require it yes sir i send uh, in group or so group only and you send it okay i saw that question i have never seen that type of question in past papers beta i have uh, never seen it last say let's about 10 years or so it has never come in papers it has it come in any past paper उस टाइप के क्वेश्चन को हम पोलर ट्राइंगल के कॉन्सेप्ट से कर सकते हैं दैट इज मच सिंपलर देन फोर पार्ट फॉर्मूला I'll explain it to you, but uh, uh, leave it for now. Otherwise, it will be unnecessarily confusing. We will keep it for the end, beta. Sir, will be teacher pola, right? Later. Sir, मुझे भी नहीं पता था एक friend ने बताया था कि will be teacher. पता था कि मेरे paper में ये four part आ गया इसलिए वो लोग fail हो गए mostly बच्चे. But I am not. Will be taking pola, right? Will be taking pola triangles. I'll explain you what pola triangles are, beta. सर आपने क्वेश्चन सर उसका थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन करें ना बोल वो एडिशनल है कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा सर वर्ड टेक्स के लिए आगे जाके थोड़ा ओके बेटा आपको क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करना है और उसमें जहां पे दिक्कत हो रही है वो पूछना है मुझसे क्योंकि वर्ड टेक्स का जो भी कॉन्सेप्ट उन क्वेश्चन में यूज हुआ है वो हमने कवर किया है सो इफ यू आर गेटिंग स्टक एट एनी पॉइंट जस्ट लेट मी नो विल क्लैरिफाई ओके ओके तो जितना आपको चाहिए ना वो मैं भेज रहा हूँ जस्ट कीप डूइंग दैट एंड रिलैक्स डोंट वरी डोंट वरी एट ऑल होता है ना इस क्वेश्चन हैज कम फाइव ईयर बिफोर उसको करने के चक्कर में ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि जो क्वेश्चन हर बार आ रहे हैं उनमें कंफ्यूज हो जाओ या वो गलत हो जाए ओके सो वी हैव टू मेक अवर फाउंडेशन स्ट्रांग ये तो ऊपर छोटे छोटे ट्रिकी टॉपिक्स हैं विच समाइम अपियर इन द एग्जाम इनको भी मैं बता दूंगा कैसे करना है बट डोंट बॉदर द कोर हैज टू बी स्ट्रांग ओके Once the core is strong, a little bit of offshoots can be easily covered up. Don't worry about that. So that's why I have not done polar triangle pickup today because polar triangle based question coming the probability is very very low. Okay. I am going to pick up today with you. The topic which we are going to pick up is uh, composite sailing. So first, I will composite sailing pick up. We will understand what is the concept behind it. and we will see ki isko hum solve kaise karte hain using the spherical trigonometry and uh, once we are done with composite sailing uh, there is one typical kind of problem which comes there so main wo bhi aapko explain karunga that comes uh, quite a bit where the limiting latitude matches with one of the ports so ye dono discuss karenge that will complete our composite sailing 
फिर वंस द कॉम्पोजिट सेलिंग इज कम्प्लीट तो आप जो मैंने असाइनमेंट आपको भेजी है यू विल बी एबल टू कम्प्लीट द फुल असाइनमेंट ओके सो दैट्स नंबर वन थिंग विच वी आर गोइंग टू डू इसको कम्प्लीट करने के बाद वी विल मूव ऑन टू बेसिकली प्रैक्टिकल नेविगेशन उसको भी मैं बहुत बेसिक स्टफ से शुरू करूंगा वी विल डू प्लेन एंड पैरल सेलिंग टूडे प्लेन एंड पैरल एंड मार्केटर दो दे आर वेरी वेरी बेसिक दे आर डन इन सेकेंड मेट्स लेवल एंड इन फेज वन यू विल नो बडी टच इज दैन बट स्टिल आई वुड गो थ्रू दैन इफ देर आर एनी डाउट दैट शुड बी क्लियर इन यूर माइंड बिकॉज एनी मिस्टेक्स मेड इन दोज बेसिक्स आर गोइंग टू रिजल्ट इन टू बिगर मिस्टेक्स एंड लूजिंग ऑफ मार्क्स सो दैट इज द प्लान फॉर टूडे बेटा Okay. Okay. Uh, sir, I have one query. Like uh, the courses uh, you are getting in solution is like in degrees and minutes, and uh, so it is okay to write in decimal or something. उसमें तो कोई नंबर नहीं करना चाहिए. You can write basically in degrees, minutes, and decimal of a minute, or you can write in degree, minute, and second also. The calculator will give you degree, minute, and second. You can write in that format also. Avoid writing in degrees and decimal of a degree. Degree and decimal of a degree. Avoid that one. So either degrees and uh, minutes, or degrees, minutes, and seconds, or degrees and decimal of a minute. That's perfect. Okay, so because uh, if we take like uh, rounding of then uh, one or two decimal decimal uh, figures, uh, differences there in the distance or some other thing. Ah, no, that's, that's fine, better. That's fine. बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन आर सॉल्व अगर आप बुक के क्वेश्चन के साथ मैच करोगे तो दे आर सॉल्व यूज इन टेबल्स यू आर सॉल्विंग दैट विद कैलकुलेटर सो देर कुड बी अटल बिट ऑफ डिफरेंस दैट्स फाइन दैट्स नॉट एन इश्यू यस सर यू जस्ट सेट नॉट टू डू दिस फॉर पार्ट फॉर्मूला आई मीन लाइक बिकॉज समन सेंट इन इन द ग्रुप सर फॉर दैट ऑल्सो वी आर डूइंग दिस क्वेश्चन ट्वेल्व विच यू आर सच टू डू सॉरी नाइन यू टू डू डू थ्री क्वेश्चन सो नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन Like uh, uh, we have to find out the DC resistance first, and then the initial force angle, and only then we will be able to find out the uh, position of the intermediate uh, point, which is like 360 miles from the starting position. So maybe with if you use the four-part formula, it will be a little shorter and save time. Uh, beta, uh, if you are that comfortable with four-part formula, you can go ahead. You can do that. Okay. Okay. But what is it? I accept it because it's not then the GTS. It is very much acceptable. It is acceptable. If okay. you are comfortable with it, you can go ahead and do it. If you feel any doubt or any confusion in applying that formula, then you will okay. switch over to the method which I have given. I basically prefer uh, the easiest possible methods. Okay. 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 So if you are comfortable with four parts, you just go ahead. That's perfectly fine. Okay. ओके सर थैंक यू सर आई हैव सम वन डाउट रिगार्डिंग यू नो हाउ टू लोकेटिंग द पोजीशन ऑन द लाइक लाइक फ्रॉम ए टू बी यू नो सर फ्रॉम वन ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट एंड ईस्ट टू वेस्ट आई सम सो आई हैव सम प्रॉब्लम इन फॉर फॉर दैट डायनामिक इमेजिनेशन ओके यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम Uh, is there a particular question where you are facing problem, beta? Sir, so, num number two, sir. Number uh, not in that uh, doc book that is given in that uh, slide show. Number two slide. Uh, the screenshot which I sent you. Yeah, yeah, screenshot. Number, number two, two question. Show. Okay, yeah. I will just open it up, beta. Give me a minute. I'll show you here. So basically, just give us a basic how to plot when we are going from west to east or east to west. So that it will be now my answer, you know, an example. Of okay, beta, I got it, I got it. Uh, in this number two question, basically the issue is, let me show you. Uh, yes, yeah, distance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Now, beta, in this, the issue here, we are basically crossing 180 degree meridian, right? Uh, so I have some problem in. Uh, in imagining that, sir. No problem, beta. I'll explain you. I'll explain you. 180 degree meridian cross करने के time पे. See, in this question we are crossing 180 degree meridian. So, अच्छा बेटा पहले मुझे ये बताओ. You are starting from 165 west and you are going to 155 east. Can you tell me the direction of the D long? 
Somebody is struggling for a link for joining. Okay, let me send it with her.
ओके ऑल राइट Yes, sir. We can see. Let us also review concept of. Very good, Peter. Great. So we are now going to start off with the concept of composite sailing. Let's go. The basic part concepts of parallel sailing, which I am sure all of us are aware of. Now, when a vessel sails along a given parallel of latitude, that means along an easterly course that is 090 degrees two, or a westerly course that is 270 degrees two, the sailing is referred to as parallel sailing. We already know why it's called parallel sailing because you are moving along a given parallel of latitude. Now, departure. is the east west distance between two places expressed in nautical miles so please note it has to be expressed in nautical miles and it needs to be the east west distance between the two places or points now we have a parallel sailing formula which gives us the relationship between d long and departure and we all know it sine of latitude is equal to departure upon d long okay beta so this is the parallel sailing formula whenever we are moving along the parallel of a latitude that means moving easterly or westerly we can calculate our distance using this formula departure obtained from the formula is the distance covered on the parallel track so cos of latitude is equal to departure upon d long or departure is equal to d long into cos of latitude so any doubt up to this place beta up to here so is this uh, cos latitude or cos mean latitude uh, beta if you are doing parallel sailing latitude and mean latitude both will be same when we are doing plane sailing then it is mean latitude okay so okay on this okay uh, so departure dep means the distance between the uh, initial and final position right that is right beta when you are doing parallel sailing departure is the actual distance covered okay okay very good so uh, this is the formula which we will be using in composite sailing departure is equal to d long into cos of latitude or cos latitude is equal to departure upon d long very good so moving ahead now obviously the cos lat Cosine is a trigonometric ratio, so obviously the units of departure and d-long will be same. So here we have the world map on the screen. Let us say we need to depart Tokyo in Japan, which comes up on the screen, marked as point A, with its coordinates also showing up. And we need to reach Seattle in United States, which also comes up on the map, marked as point B. The coordinates of the Seattle also showing up on the screen. Obviously, our preferred route shall be Great Circle sailing to say one time, and in this case, you can see it shall be across the 180th meridian, across Pacific on an easterly track. Now, let us quickly draw a PAB triangle between Tokyo and Seattle on the globe. Here we have point A representing Tokyo. Here we have point B, Seattle in United States. We join them with a shorter arc of great circle. So this is from A to B, the arc great circle track between A and B. This is the vertex of, of the great circle track. So we have the GC track from A to B as well as the vertex of this track. Now we can see in this case the GC track is easterly because the D long from A to B. is easterly 
let's now draw the meridians of A and B. So the two meridians come up on the diagram and what we get is the PAB spherical triangle which we all know that if enough information is available can be solved. Now this white track out here is a rum line track between the two locations. Okay, beta. So now what you see on the screen is a actual PAB triangle on the surface of the earth. P is the pole, in this case the north pole. A is our starting position, that is Tokyo. And P is our destination position, that is Seattle. So we have shown the great circle track also. We have shown meridian of A, meridian of B also. Any doubt up to here, beta? No, Very good. Let's go ahead. And we can see that the rum line distance obviously is greater than the GC track and therefore the preferred track shall be the GC track from A to B. For the sake of the clarity, let us see how these two tracks, that is the GC track and the rum line track, would appear on a Mercator chart. Now, this is how the tracks would appear on a Mercator chart. On Mercator chart, the GC track would be a curved track and a run line track would be a straight line track. We all know that on uh, Mercator charts, because the meridians are parallel straight lines, therefore the run line tracks are straight lines. Now, here it may appear that GC track is a longer distance, but that is not so. It is the GC, uh, distance along the GC track which shall be the shortest distance. How would these two tracks look on a mnemonic chart? Let's look at that. Now here we have how it would look on a mnemonic chart. On a mnemonic chart, it's polar mnemonic. GC track would be a straight line and rub line track would be a curved track. So hope these two comparisons also bring in clarity here. Okay, beta. So this is just for your uh, understanding, conceptual understanding, not that we require them in our solution, but just to show you how a GC track and a rumb line track appears on a Mercator projection and a mnemonic projection. About how these tracks appear on different projections. Now, having appreciated as to how these tracks appear on different projections, we come to the most important part of our discussion. And for that, we go back to the PAB spherical triangle constructed between Tokyo and Seattle a while back. Now, on this globe, we can see this PAB triangle with this one being the GC track. With the latitude of either the initial position or the final position. Till now in the examples we have seen that the limiting latitude is higher than the latitude of starting position as well as the destination. But if in case the limiting latitude matches with the latitude of initial position or the final position, how do we approach this type of question? Uh, let's make a, a diagram here and uh, try to understand first what the question is and then uh, how do we solve it. Let's assume the vessel's initial position is here. We mark this position as A. This is the initial position of the ship. Let's assume that the final position of the ship now in composite sailing problems, uh, the first course is found by making a grid circle track. The grid circle track should be such that it passes from our initial position, in this case A, and it has its vertex on the limiting latitude. So we will first plot this grid circle track exactly like this. It will pass from position A, that is our initial position, and the track has its vertex on the limiting latitude. So you can see the first grid circle track in the plot now. As you, as you can see, it passes from the initial position and 
it has its vertex on the limiting latitude. So that's the limiting latitude is the highest latitude where this great circle track would go. Now the point where it meets the limiting latitude is the vertex of uh, this particular track and uh, we mark off this vertex as V1. As usual, we mark off this vertex as V1. Now once we reach at this vertex V1, we then proceed on our second leg of the passage. The second leg of the passage is a parallel track. We move along the parallel of the latitude on our limiting latitude itself. Now when you move along the parallel of the latitude, or which will be the limiting latitude in this case, you will see the port B final position being at the limiting latitude, when you move on this parallel track, you will arrive at your destination. So you see, in this case, we do not have to follow the third leg of our passage. That is the great circle track from limiting latitude going up to position B. That is not required at all. Because when we are following our second leg of the passage, that is moving along the parallel track, we will be reaching to latitude. Now let's complete the diagram. Let's mark off the meridian of vertex 1 also. So you can see the meridian of vertex 1 uh, marked on the plot. PV1 is the meridian of our vertex. So green color track is the GC track passing from position A and having its vertex at limiting latitude. Uh, the red color track V1B is the rumb line track uh, from the vertex 1 which takes us to our final position B. So we have the diagram uh, completed uh, on the screen now. Now in this diagram, we now have two triangles being formed. In a basic composite shading problem, we saw there were three triangles which were being formed. But in this case, uh, there are only two triangles which are being formed. And out of these two, one of the triangles is a spherical triangle. The two triangles being formed are PAV1 and the second one is PBV1. And out of them, the spherical triangle is the PAV1 triangle. So it's a spherical triangle and not only that, it's a special spherical triangle because we have a right angle at vertex 1. At vertex, the great circle track runs in east-west direction, that is 090270 direction, and it is at right angles to the meridian, which runs in the north-south direction. So angle V1 here is a right angle, and triangle PAV1 is a spherical triangle. So, the PAV1 triangle is checked. This is the spherical triangle which we have. The second triangle, Papa Bravo Victor 1, PBV1, is not a spherical triangle because the side BV1 is not a great circle. It's a small circle. All parallels of latitude other than the equator are small circles. So the limiting latitude which we have as side BV1 is a small circle. So that tells us that this triangle is not a spherical triangle. So now we have identified the spherical triangle. Let's see how do we solve it. The solution is uh, uh, quite similar to the one which we had done earlier. We will first uh, solve the spherical triangle PAV1 using the Napier's rule. Now Napier rule says that uh, Uh, using the Napier's rule, we can solve the triangle PAV1. The Napier rule says that in a right angle triangle, if we know any two parts of the triangle other than the speciality, the 90 degree angle or 90 degree side, 
other than the 90 degree angle or 90 degree side if any two parts of the triangle are known using the Napier rule we can find out any other missing part of the triangle so let's identify the two known parts the first part which is known to us is PA side PA side is the uh, colat of our starting position A 90 minus latitude of A. The second part which is uh, known to us in this triangle is side PV1. Side PV1 is the colat of our limiting latitude. The limiting latitude is given to us in these questions. So it is 90 minus limiting latitude. So with these two parts, we enter into the Napier's rule and what do we find out? The first thing which we find out is angle P of this triangle. Angle P of triangle PAV1. Now this angle is the angle at the pole contained between the meridian of A and the meridian of vertex 1. So this gives us the D long between A and V1. Now as soon as we have this D long, we can apply this D long to the longitude of A which is our initial position. The lat long of initial position is provided to us. As you apply this D long to longitude of A, it gives you the longitude of the vertex 1. So angle P as it is known applied to the longitude of A gives us the longitude of vertex 1. Now when we get the longitude of vertex 1, we are now able to easily calculate the run line distance, Bravo Victor 1 also. We have the longitude of vertex 1 known to us. We have the longitude of our destination position B, final position B. So we can calculate the D long between B and B1. So this D long is used in the parallel sailing formula to calculate the departure between B and B1. And it gives us the rumb line distance Bravo Victor 1 using parallel sailing. Coming back to the first triangle PAV1, now the next thing which we find is distance AV1. Again, entering into the Napier's rule using the known paths, we now find out distance AV1. This gives us the distance along our first leg, which is a GC track. So after we have found the GC track, the next item we again enter into Napier rule and the next item which we find is angle A. So angle A is obtained next using Napier's rule and this angle A helps us to find out our initial course. So angle A is used to find out our initial course exactly like we did in uh, normal grid circle sailing questions following the 1, 2, 3 method, 1, 2, 3 stepwise procedure. We have distance AV1, we have distance BV1, adding them gives us the total composite distance between A to B and initial course has been obtained using angle A already. So this uh, gives us all the required items for this typical problem important thing to remember here is you have to make the diagram and out of the two triangles first identify which is the spherical triangle any one of them could be the spherical triangle depending upon uh, to which place the limiting latitude coincides so once you have the spherical triangle then first thing which we find is the longitude of the vertex once the longitude of the vertex is known, everything else uh, falls into place. We can calculate the rumb line distance, we can calculate the initial course, the GC track distance, 
and the question gets solved. So this uh, triangle P A B one was on the opposite side. If it was uh, P B one B, then uh, initial course will be zero nine zero right, and then the final course we'll have to calculate right. If the That's same right. triangle was on the other side. That's right, brother. That's right. Okay. So, any more doubt coming, brother? If you find this small angle P green one. And then we have the d long between a and b already, and we can calculate the p two, and then we can. Now, uh, having understood uh, this kind of a question, uh, we will now proceed ahead. Now, in composite shading questions, you may sometimes get stuck with a, a challenge in the question, and. Uh, you may not be able to find out how to proceed ahead in that case. Now that challenge is, uh, let's assume that uh, you have uh, solved the triangle PAV1 using the Napier's rule, and you have found out the longitude of the vertex, the V1. Now when you find out the longitude of the vertex, there is a possibility that the vertex v1 may go outside the triangle pab papa alpha bravo so how will you come to know that we have the initial position and the final position known to us both the longitudes are known to us and we have calculated the longitude of the vertex v1 using the napier's rule so when you compare the longitude of V1 with the longitude of your final position, it will immediately tell you whether V1 lies in between A and B or V1 lies outside A and B. Let's say for example, if A's longitude was 30 degrees east and B's longitude was 70 degrees east and you find out that the longitude of vertex 1 is 80 degrees east. Now obviously 80 degrees east has to be more eastwards of the destination. So how to proceed ahead in this case and what does this mean? If the oh, vertex comes outside, maybe. that basically tells you that from your initial position, if you move on a track which has its vertex on the limiting latitude, you will be reaching at a place uh, farther away from your destination position. So this simply means that if you follow a great circle track from A to B, then in no case the vertex is going to come in between A and B. The vertex will not be inside, the vertex is going to be outside. If the vertex is going to be outside, that tells us that while going from A to B, the vertex is outside. So while going from A to B, we will never be crossing the limiting latitude. You so see the vertex which we have found out has come outside the triangle. So this tells us that if you move within this triangle PAB, the vertex being outside, you are not going to cross the limiting latitude in any case. So if you get a, a solution like this, that the vertex is falling outside the triangle, then in that case, uh, you have to simply write a remark. Since the vertex falls outside the triangle, uh, it is clear from the working that if we move on a great circle track from A to B, we will never be crossing the limiting latitude. So composite shading is not required here. And after writing this remark, you can make this PAB triangle again. And you can solve it using the great circle method, using the cosine formula, and you can find out the great circle distance. So in that case, composite shading is not required at all. 
So going on a GC track, you will never cross the limiting latitude. So we follow the GC track from A to B and calculate the GC distance. However, uh, we cannot do that in the beginning. So a, a doubt may come in your mind. Uh, sir, we can make a PAB triangle and we can find angle A and angle B. And if any of those angles is obtuse, we know vertex lies outside and then we can solve it using the GC method only. But that method is not recommended because in the question, they have told you to follow a composite track. So our beginning should be assuming that composite sailing is relevant here. And we will make a triangle like this only in two parts. Papa alpha vector 1, the second part Papa bravo vector 1 showing a composite track. So we will start with this. However, while working out, if we realize that in this question, vertex coming outside and composite sailing is not relevant or not required, then we switch over to GC sailing and find out the GC distance. So fundamentally start with composite and then switch over to GC if required. There is a second disadvantage of uh, starting with GC. One is if you initially start with the GC track and you calculate angle A and B, if both the angles are acute angles, then you will have to switch over to composite and you will be wasting some amount of time. Even if one of the angles becomes obtuse and you follow the GC solution, uh, the examiner will have a doubt in his mind that how did you figure out before solving the question that in this particular question composite sailing was not relevant. Because if a limiting latitude is given in the question, it is uh, considered that you will be starting off with the composite sailing method. But if you straight away start with the GC method, the examiner will be clueless. How did you figure out that composite sailing was not relevant here? So a doubt in his mind may lead to deduction of marks. So start with composite and if you realize later on that uh, composite sailing is not relevant in this case, move on to GC. Now this could happen in normal composite questions also where you have three triangles. Here we have only two triangles, but uh, in case you have the third triangle also, the normal questions which we did in composite sailing. Now in that case, how will you come to know if in a particular case composite sailing is not relevant? Now when you are solving a normal composite question, having two vertices V1 and V2 and there are three triangles, P A V1, P B V2 and A A non spherical triangle in between that is P V1 V2. So in that case, you need to calculate the middle angle P there. This middle angle P helps us to calculate the rumb line distance between V1 and V2. So if in any of the questions, the middle angle P comes to be negative, Remember in those questions we were calculating the complete angle P which was the D long between initial and final positions. Then we were calculating the smaller angle P of first triangle PAV1 and the smaller angle P of the last triangle PBV2. And we were subtracting these two small angles to get the middle angle P. So if in any of the questions you get a negative middle angle P, so that simply tells you that composite sailing is not relevant or not required in this case if you follow the GC track, direct GC track from the initial position A to final position B, you will never be crossing the limiting latitude at all. So once it is clear to you, you get a negative angle P, just try to remark there, uh, since the middle angle P is negative, it indicates that following a GC track from A to B, we are not going to cross the limiting latitude at all. So in this question, the composite sailing is not relevant, 
Hence, solving it using a normal GC sailing question. So you make the PAB triangle and find out the GC distance between them straight away. So these are the two uh, out of ordinary kind of uh, uh, questions which may sometimes appear in the exam, though the frequency is very, very low. If the question says it's a composite sailing, 99% it would be a composite sailing question only. But now you know that if you get stuck like this, the vertex comes outside the triangle PAB in a two triangle case, the one like the one which we see on the screen, or the middle angle B comes negative in a normal composite question, you know that composite shading is not relevant and you switch over to the, the middle angle will become negative. Okay, perfect, cool. So, the middle angle uh, will obviously come negative because the two angles will be uh, subsiding over the other one. So, in case we find out that the middle angle is negative, then that will automatically like composite shading does not exist. That's right, and you switch over to GC. Okay. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Bola, beta. Uh, sir, my question is when we are solving the first triangle PAV1, we will come to know that it is composite or uh, grid circle, right, sir? That's so, right, so, next step, why we need to calculate the next step that we are getting angle P negative or positive to confirm it is a composite scenario? No, beta, no, no, no. That negative angle is in a three triangle scenario. Okay? Two triangle में आपको negative angle कभी नहीं मिलेगा. Two triangle में तो vertex बाहर जाएगा और आप GC में switch over कर लोगे. Negative cases जब तीन triangle होंगी बेटा, तब बन सकता है. Okay, sir. So it's possible that the first triangle is a GC track. Sorry, composite. Second will be Ramblan and third can be like uh, 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 I want to say that sir, third triangle को solve करना जरूरी है क्या? Before uh, to know that it's composite or not? नहीं बेटा मैं समझाता हूँ आप समझो सबसे पहले तो आपको ये तो पता चल जाएगा कि two triangle वाला question है या three वाला पता चल जाएगा ना? हाँ सर question से पता चल जाएगा. Very good. अब मान लेते हैं कि two triangle वाला question है जैसी diagram आप देख रहे हो इस case में vertex one का longitude हमने निकाला longitude बाहर आ गया हमने GC में switch over कर लिया question done okay okay sir अब आते हैं थ्री ट्रायंगल वाले क्वेश्चन पे थ्री ट्रायंगल वाला क्वेश्चन आपने सॉल्व करना शुरू किया जब आपने मिडिल एंगल पी निकाला मिडिल एंगल पी नेगेटिव आ गया जब मिडिल एंगल पी नेगेटिव आया आपने जीसी में स्विच ओवर कर लिया क्वेश्चन सॉल्व डन बेटा ओके सर सो अगर नेगेटिव आया पी तो कंप्लीट ए टू बी विल बी लाइक ग्रेट सेलिंग सर राइट दैट इज राइट कंप्लीट ए टू बी ग्रेट सर्कल सेलिंग नो कंपोजिट एनीवेयर नो बेटा इन दैट केस वर्टेक्स इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड आपने वैसे फाइंड कर ही लिया है बट इन दैट केस नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एट ऑल यू सिंपली स्विच ओवर टू जीसी एंड फाइंड आउट द जीसी डिस्टेंस स्ट्रेट अवे सर इफ वी हैव एंगल पी डी लॉन्ग विद अस एंड वी फाइंड आउट द पी वन दैट इज स्मॉल एंगल एंड पी ए वी वन ट्रायंगल एंड इफ इट कम्स नेगेटिव देन ऑलरेडी दिस वर्टेज इज नॉट लाइंग इन साइड द आवर ट्रैक so uh, then we directly know that it's not lying inside our track. बेटा आप इसी क्वेश्चन की बात कर रहे हो जिसकी डायग्राम है बनी हुई? Yes sir इसी की बात कर रहा हूँ मैं. Okay बेटा इस केस में कभी भी आपका एंगल पी नेगेटिव नहीं आएगा. Okay sir. You will always have a positive angle P when you apply the NPS. So with this we complete our great circle sailing and composite sailing topic. अब आप बेटा जो मैंने असाइनमेंट आपको भेजी थी वो असाइनमेंट पूरी कंप्लीट कर सकते हो ऑल द क्वेश्चंस यू शुड बी एबल टू डू दैम सो प्लीज प्रैक्टिस ऑल दोज क्वेश्चंस इन द असाइनमेंट एंड वंस यू कंप्लीट दैट असाइनमेंट दैट शुड प्रिपेयर यू फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर ऑफ यूर पेपर वंस द असाइनमेंट इज डन असाइनमेंट आपने कर ली आपकी तसली हो गई 
you are confident and comfortable, you can go to any past paper, pick up question number four, you should be able to do that. Can you assignment again, sir? Uh, I'll post it on the group beta, no issues. I'll post it again on the WhatsApp group. Uh, 25 marks are beta. Thank you so much, sir. But make sure that you complete the assignment. Okay? So, so that will give you sufficient practice. Uh, sir, can you share the PPT for these two conditions that you just told us? <laughs> Just a minute, let me share the assignment with you once again. I have shared your group with you once again for those who did not get it. Uh, why do you need the PPT? Why did somebody ask you for that? Why you need the PPT? Sir, so just for the revision purpose, uh, maybe after one and a half months, we might forget the special condition. Public now, okay. No problem, I'll share with you. you. Screenshot share कर देता हूँ बेटा आपके साथ। So let me I'll I'll share it just now. Don't worry. इसके लिए लेके जाने की चार साल बढ़ेगा। No issues बेटा। लेके जाने तो composite से लेके जाने का बहुत easy हो गया। तो बहुत ज़्यादा रही composite से लेके जाने। Now it become easier sir। Yes sir, very nice. Thank you sir, thank you so much. Very nice. Okay, that's great, beta. Basically, intention is that you should be able to understand it easily. And uh, paper में देखो जो problem होती है, वो ये नहीं होती कि आप question नहीं कर पाते हैं. Paper में क्या होता है? आपके ऊपर time pressure और accuracy pressure होता है. So in time pressure, आप वही method correctly कर पाओगे जो easy है, जिसे आप easily understand कर सकते हो. So you should be able to understand it very very easily and then there should be no problem in getting to the solution. So let me share a screenshot with you of this question. Give me a minute. So after I think second year did not have composite sensing. I don't think it's right, sir. No, it's just the same thing. Yes, correct. No, it's not second year, it's just the composite. No, no, second year never had composite. Only it's easy. ये लो बेटा मैंने शेयर कर दिया है व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप पे ये टिपिकल क्वेश्चन वाला जो प्रेजेंटेशन था सो यू कैन इफ यू वांट यू कैन जस्ट रिवाइज इट फ्रॉम देयर ओके अब बेटा आगे हमारा अब ये ग्रेट सर्कल और कंपोजिट ये दो टॉपिक कवर हो गए हैं नाउ वी आर मूविंग इनटू प्रैक्टिकल नेविगेशन ओके सो प्रैक्नेप में मैं बिल्कुल बेसिक से शुरू करूंगा हो सकता है आपको थोड़ा बोरिंग भी लगे हो सकता है नींद भी आ जाए बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू गो थ्रू द बेसिक्स ऑफ प्लेन एंड पैरल सेलिंग एज वेल एज मार्केटर सेलिंग एंड देन वी विल मूव आइड हमारा जो आगे प्लान रहेगा प्लेन एंड पैरल सेलिंग मार्केटर सेलिंग एंड देन सेलेस्टियल नेविगेशन सेलेस्टियल नेविगेशन में मैं बिल्कुल बेसिक्स अगेन आई विल गो टू द बेसिक्स फेमिलराइजेशन विद एलमेक वट ऑल इन्फॉर्मेशन इज देयर फिर आपकी जो बेसिक कैलकुलेशन है ना Calculation of amplitude, calculation of azimuth, okay, getting the compass error. ये सारी चीजें altitude correction, ये सारी चीजें हमने एक बार touch करनी है. So some of you may even feel bored कि ये हम पुराना second minute का topic दोबारा revise कर रहे हैं. But let it be. I want to spend that much of time because अगर ये चीज आपके mind में clear नहीं है and you make a mistake in these, तो बड़े question तो obviously गलत हो जाएंगे. Okay? तो ये हमारा प्लान है। 
अब बेटा हमारे पास दो ऑप्शन है वन वी कैन जम्प इन टू प्लेन एंड पैरल सेलिंग नाउ इट विल टेक अबाउट हाफ एन आवर फोर्टी फाइव मिनट और वी कैन डू इट इन टुमारो क्लास ऑल्सो आई हैव क्लास विद यू टुमारो तो शेल आई कंटिन्यू ट्रेन थी सर ट्रेन एक बंदे की ट्रेन थी ना सर कल चल जाते हैं सर आप संडे भी है सर ट्रेन की स्पीड से चल रही है ठीक है बोला था ऑप्शन से चैलेंज था ऑप्शन से चैलेंज सर जी ग्रेड सर्कल पहले कर रहा था सर इसमें ये कोसाइन फॉर्मूला है जहाँ पे माइनस होता है जैसे कोस ए बी माइनस हम साइड से लेते हैं वहां पे प्लस था एक जगह पे तो मैंने हैंड से देख रहा था मेरे को समझ नहीं आया लेकिन फिर मैंने बाद में समझा उसको कि जब दो तरह का एटीट्यूड दे रखा होता है नॉर्थ एंड साउथ सो उस टाइम पे मतलब जैसे नॉर्थ से इक्वेटर ग्रोथ करके साउथ में जा रहे हैं हम लोग देन 90 प्लस वो लेटीट्यूड लेना होता है उसमें वो जो फॉर्मूला है वो कोर्स 90 प्लस थीटा इसको जो माइनस साइन थीटा ओके तो वो प्लस हो जाएगा वहां पे कोर्स साइन फॉर्मूला में ना ओके बेटा तो साइन फॉर्मूला में कोई चेंज नहीं आएगा वो बिल्कुल वैसे ही रहेगा जो आपकी पीए बी ट्राइंगल है ना पी ए बी ट्राइंगल Yes, अगर एक पोजीशन ऑपोजिट वाले हेमिस्फीयर में आ गई है तो वो 90 माइनस लैट नहीं होगी वो 90 प्लस लैट हो जाएगी यस yes, 90 प्लस लैट हो जाएगी बस उसको 90 प्लस लैट करो और कोई चेंज नहीं है फॉर्मूला रिमेन द सेम ओके दैट इज द ओनली डिफरेंस ओके सर इन क्वेश्चन जिसमें Find the longitude or on at which it crosses the equator. So can we just uh, plus, uh, like plus minus plus or minus 90 from the vertex position longitude which we have followed, or we have to solve it through the working? No, you can just write a remark that equator crossing is 90 degrees away from vertex longitude, and you can find the longitude straight away. Only thing, be careful, 90 plus karna hai or minus karna hai. Okay, that you have to see from the diagram. Okay, sir. All right. Yeah, and one more doubt, like this effective, uh, the the pole which we have to choose is always like the higher uh, latitude of the two positions, even in this case also, composite sailing also. That is like uh, That's right, better. Composite questions, 99% of the questions, both the positions will be in the same latitude. So, kabhi doubt nahi hoga, jis latitude mein positions hai, usi mein limiting lat hoga, usi mein aapka pole aega. Okay, sir. And sir, one last uh, this uh, like the great circle sailing in the north south is there is there's a, like a, within the north south sailing then it has a very less component. Right? It's ma ma mainly for east to west uh, ocean trans ocean passages and all that. Right. Great circle sailing is most beneficial in two conditions. One, when you are in higher latitudes, and number two. When you are moving on an east-west course, great circle sailing gives you minimum benefit when you are moving north-south. No benefit at all. And great circle sailing doesn't give you much benefit when you are close to the equator. Right? Okay, sir. So this, this, the, in the oral channel, they, they can ask something. There is a reason for this or something, no? Yeah, the reason is very simple. तो रीजन भी बता देता हूँ, ओके? रीजन ये है बेटा, अगर आप नॉर्थ साउथ जा रहे हो, नॉर्थ साउथ, राइट? यस। नॉर्थ साउथ मीन यू आर गोइंग क्लोज टू ए मेरिडियन, करेक्ट? यस सर। नाउ ए मेरिडियन इज ए ग्रेट सर्कल आल्सो, इट इज ए रंब लाइन आल्सो। सो वेदर यू डू रंब लाइन सेलिंग और यू डू जी कैप्टन बोलता है ना दोनों तरीकों से बताओ अगर नीचे जा रहे हैं ना मतलब मीडियम के पास है तो उनसे काम ना तो प्रैक्टिकल करके नहीं देखते कोई फर्क नहीं आता जाना तो मैंने आपको रीजन भी बता दिया अब आप इक्वेटर पे आ जाओ इक्वेटर इज ए स्पेशल ग्रेट सर्कल विच इज ए रंबलाइन आल्सो सो चाहे आप वहां रंबलाइन सेलिंग करो चाहे ग्रेट सर्कल सेलिंग करो डिस्टेंस सेम ही आना है सो ओर इज ऑल्सो क्लियर Okay, thank you. Okay, and tell me more about it. Still telling, sir? Still telling? 
<laughs> नहीं बेटा आई हैव लेफ्ट सेलिंग काफी टाइम हो गया आपसे ओके सर सर एक चीज मुझे पूछना जी सर आपने पहले वन यू विद दिस श्रीराम इंस्टीट्यूट इन दोहार का नो बेटा नेवर आई वाज विद आई राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ माय ट्रेनिंग कैरियर आई हैव बीन विद ए आई आई वाज विद ए आर आई डेली एंड नाउ आई एम विद ए आर आई पंचकूला ओके बिकॉज आई रिमेम्बर इट वॉज अ लॉन्ग टाइम बैक आई डिट वन कोर्स एंड आई वॉज जस्ट फिगरिंग आउट दैट ओके सॉल्व सम बडी समथिंग कैप्टन and uh, he was taking some of our courses so i remember from that okay sir okay get a tutorial on teaching chart work in there please okay so <coughs> okay beta uh kisko beta hey sir ko sir hey sir yeah i take classes in all competencies beta so better wo starting aapke sath jud jaye to acha lagega sir ye sun le वेरी गुड बेटा ग्रेट सो वी कम्प्लीट अवर फर्स्ट टॉपिक सो मैं आज प्रैक्टिकल नेविगेशन नहीं शुरू कर रहा हूँ कल हम इसे शुरू करेंगे और कल आपको कोई होमवर्क नहीं दूंगा मैं बिकॉज यू हैव लॉट ऑफ होमवर्क टू कवर अप टुडे आपकी जो असाइनमेंट है वो चलेगी सो टुमारो विल बी ओनली ए रिफ्रेशर काइंड ऑफ क्लास प्लेन सेलिंग पैरल सेलिंग मार्केटर सेलिंग ये देखेंगे सेलेस्टियल नेविगेशन की बेसिक कैलकुलेशन देखेंगे टुमारो क्लास यू कैन कीप एलमेक विद यू एंड प्रैक्टिकल नेविगेशन बुक विद यू सो वी विल फेमिलाइज सो दैट्स द प्लान फॉर टुमारो एंड If all doubts are clear, then we can call off the meeting, and I'll see you tomorrow.